Hollywood. Made in Hollywood. Welcome to Made in Hollywood. Made in Hollywood. After an elaborate wedding and romantic honeymoon, star-crossed lovers Edward and Bella are forced to deal with the high-stakes consequences of an unexpected pregnancy in the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, Part 1. Hey, I'm Robert Pattinson. Welcome to Made in Hollywood. Here's a scene from the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn. I, Edward Cullen, take you, Bella Swan. For better or for worse. To love. To cherish as long as we both shall live. In this film, Bella really has all these new challenges that she's facing, and, and, and we have the two scenes that everyone's been looking forward to, the wedding and the honeymoon. I know it's weird, because she's, uh, she's always been so sure of something that seems so crazy to everyone, you know? And that's sort of why the movies, the series, of, they've been so sort of romantic and, um, like, scary, you know what I mean? Just sort of like full of, full of everything that, that gets us girls going. And they have legends about blood drinking demons who prey on. This is just very much within their relationship and no one else can help them. And, uh, and you know, and they're fighting for themselves as well. So it's, it's a difficult thing for them to handle. He's always wanted one thing and that's to end up with Bella. And then when he realizes that that is not gonna happen, he, I mean, he deals with it how Jacob would always deal with problems. Um, he loses control. This is how I'll remember you. Pink cheeks, heartbeat. I think I'd be used to telling you goodbye by now. Your character goes through a major transformation in this film. He has to really step up and become a leader. Yes, he does. He does. You know, what's exciting is he starts the movie as the same Jacob we've always seen, but by the end, he's a new guy. He has to mature quite a bit, make some tough decisions, and that was very exciting for me as an actor. You know, I think of this like a classic Hollywood type of movie. It's it's a romantic melodrama, you know. They used to make a lot of those that fell out of fashion. But to me, the first part of this movie is that, and then it morphs into like what is really a flat-out horror movie. It's not literally a horror movie, but the combination of those things, um, I think, like define the style of this movie. Last night was the best night of my existence. Were you nervous to go into production for this film? Were you kind of feeling the pressure that you had to live up to the fans' expectations? Yeah, totally. I mean, I have that with every movie anyway, but um, more so with the Twilight series and more so with this installment. We knew that it was going to be a six-month shoot, and that's a lot, because usually we're doing three-month shoots. And, uh, and, you know, you just take it one day at a time. You have it weighing on you for that long. The wedding was the last scene we shot. So it was like, really? You're going to torture me to the last second? My favorite part of the film is when we see the shift in Edward's reaction to the baby because at first he just wants it out, he doesn't really care about it, but once he actually starts hearing the thoughts of the baby, this changes and I, I love to see that shift and I love to see kind of how they come together. I mean there comes a point in the relationship, like no matter, no matter what a guy thinks, it eventually comes down to the whatever. Yeah, the, the girl is the one in control of it. And as Edward has been the most controlling person throughout, all, even if it's with good intentions, it drives him crazy and he basically has to surrender his entire ego. The fetus is incompatible with your body. It's too strong and fast growing. It's crushing you from the inside out. We didn't think it was possible that she could get pregnant. We didn't really know that, that a human and, and a Concern, vampire could. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like I needed a parachute. I was, like, falling through <laughs> space when I got that yeah. word. Despite all of their differences and how much they hate each other, they, uh, they have to join forces. They have to join together in order to save the one person they love. I can't see Bella's future anymore. She's really concerned because she um, doesn't know what's going to happen, and usually Alice does know what's going on, and, um, and the fact that... I, I feel like you kind of think the worst if, if you can't see someone's future anymore. Everybody really is just thinking about Jacob and what is this going to mean for him and uh, concerned for his feelings and his well-being. You're the enemy now. Sam won't hesitate. You will be slaughtered. 
I think it was also cool to really see him join on, join in on the Cullen family. Yeah. It was a nice little change to be able to see him roaming around the house. It was, yeah. I mean, and he's he's very different when he's with his pack compared to the Cullens. I mean, he, he's a little uneasy at first with them, but slowly he becomes more comfortable, and they become his new family. If Sam comes after Bella, are you really ready to fight your own brothers? Then he's torn between his old family, the pack, who he's always been loyal to, and his new family, and he really has to, he has to say, all right, what's the right thing to do? Get ready, they're coming for Bella. They're not gonna touch her. If you kill her, you kill me! These moments are so built up that I didn't want to look back and go, you didn't even have that experience. Like, I don't even remember what it felt like. And so to be honest, I have no idea. I just went, I just went. And, uh, you know, it's been four years. We know these characters and and all the rehearsals and all the read, the reads of the books, they're there. And so it, I think it came out. Great. I'm going to pull them out. You know, I think that's the essence of this, um, this series, it's like that's that's what's cool about it. The, there are these vampires and shapeshifters living in a very real place. You really believe these people, and even those vampires, you know, they live in a kind of real way. So that's I think if you don't have that, then you're betraying what the whole thing's about.